We are back again with Martin Pelche. There's a look at the S&P TSX Composite Index. It's rallied since the middle portion of June, still off its all-time high reached on May the 21st. Martin Pelche to talk about the uh, Canadian stock market right now. You uh, say in some notes, uh, uh, Martin, that there's better breath up here. And you, uh, you actually cite as a reference uh, our beloved former colleague, Francis Horodelsky, who was a, an anchor here for many, many years. She's still very, very active on X slash Twitter. You can follow her at, uh, at F-H-O-R-O, F, at F Horo. And uh, what is Francis telling us about the, uh, the market? And what do you think about opportunities in the Canadian market, uh, Martin? So in the U.S., uh, it's the narrowest market we've seen in 34 years. It's quite astounding. Uh, 20, only 20% 20 of the stocks are outperforming the S&P 500. And that's uh, compared to the long-term average of 49%. Canada, on the other hand, um, is uh, roughly half the companies are beating the TSX uh, this year. So there's much better uh, breadth. So I guess everyone's kind of more sharing the pain <laughs> than, than uh, I, I guess the TSX is reflecting the S&P 493 more than, more than anything else. Uh, when looking as an investment, um, uh, we still, uh, before I jump into Canada, I'd still like to say that we, we still have a decent weighting to the US. Um, but there are some strategies you can look at for hedging. Uh, we've done some buffered strategies that protect our full downside with capped upside to nine and a half, ten percent, which is more than enough to keep our clients happy. Now, in the in in Canada, um, if you take a look at at, at certain sub sectors, um, the bank uh, ETS for uh, the banks, for example, collectively now there is some some opportunity for stock picking among those banks, but. If you look at equal banks, BMO equal weight, <clears throat> equal weight a banks ETF is only up, you know, 8.8 percent over the last 12 months, um, and then the capped utilities index um, is down 6.1 percent, and I, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, interest rates. If you look at the telcos, uh, they've been they've just been absolutely destroyed here uh, over the last 12 months. They're down anywhere from 13 to 20 percent. And uh, we won't mention which one's down 20% because <laughs> I'm sure our viewers know. Um, and uh, and this is a wonderful program here. Um, and uh, so it's, it's interest rates, and, uh, and 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 those are interest rate sensitive segments of the market. And we think rates are going to fall a lot faster in Canada than the U.S. And those segments, of the markets are are, are definitely going to benefit from that. Do you see opportunity in the uh, Canadian telco uh, uh, stocks? The stock you're uh, obliquely referring to, of course, is BCE, down in a big, big way uh, so far this year, and it is the, indeed the parent of this uh, television channel. Do you see it? There's uh, BCE on the screen, down uh, nearly 27% over yeah. the past 52 weeks. Do you see opportunity here among the likes of BCE, Rogers, or TELUS? I want to be careful. I, I, I definitely... Uh, since I'm uh, in, in stampede season here, uh, I like when I'm walking. I like to avoid bear traps, and uh, and and I want to be very careful about the telcos, about them being a, a value trap, and uh, and so um, there there are some questions around the uh, dividend sustainability, and it's definitely being compensated. You're being compensated for that by uh, the reflective dividend yields. Um, I have been dipping my toes into BCE. I just can't help it. Um, I'm just hoping that that it isn't uh, a said bear trap. And uh, but I, I have dipped my toes. I've done it more along the lines of a, a structured note product uh, around it. So at least I've got some you know 20, 30 percent downside in the event that I'm wrong. I'm almost fully protected. Well, will be I think at these level um, and, uh, and 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 do get some some upside capture. Um, it's just too too uh, too hard to uh, to resist. What about the utility sector at a time when rates are coming down? We're heavily overweight. Um, uh, can you, uh, utilities space, uh, both direct um, through uh, some ETFs, direct positions in some stocks, and uh, and structured product uh, as an overlay on top of it. Um, you know, these th that that sector has just been completely beaten up. Um, interest rates cannot stay at this level in Canada. Um, there's all kinds of economic indicators uh, pointing to such. The big question is, does the Bank of Canada follow the U.S. Fed, which is remaining steadfast with its uh, with it holding rates steady? At the beginning of the year, people were expecting you know five to seven rate cuts in the U.S. We're lucky if we get one in September. I think the odds are 50 or 60 percent. In Canada, I would expect to see three more rate cuts. And if if they don't, then you know, um, then, then there's some, some 
some risk to that. And, uh, and if we do get those rate cuts, then definitely those, that sector uh, looks very attractive. Uh, let's finish with about 60 seconds on the oil and gas sector. We spoke to an oil commodity expert earlier in this program, and he made the point that the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion has been very material to the income statements of the, uh, of the producers. The cash flow these companies are getting are just astounding. Um, I left the oil patch as a research analyst specializing in that sector in 08. Um, and, uh, and so I have the ability to go into the sector and out of the sector. I'm not long only. Um, I don't run a fund dedicated to it. Um, so I could be honest about it. At, at one point in March of 2020, uh, we were uh, as low weight as we could be, almost zero. Um, and we've since taken it up materially to, uh, to a large overweight. It's probably the most hated sector out there. Um, if you are, as I just mentioned about the environment, we're going to see more rate cuts in Canada than the U.S., um, that's very bullish for these energy companies uh, who do get paid in U.S. dollars. And as you just mentioned, now they've got a, a, a better pricing uh, with the narrowing of their differentials with the uh, TMX. And, uh, and so they're just going to cash flow a ton of money. I'm looking at them almost like a private company holding. Uh, they're not reflecting in current oil prices. If oil prices stay where they're at, um, there's some, some material upside in, in some of these names. And you know what? They've done pretty good for us this year uh, with our top holdings being C&Q and Suncor. Uh, we're, we're quite happy with them, and, and we think there's some upside there. Um, we're just wondering if it's going to go down to the mid-cap space, which is completely hated and unloved.